today it is going to be a bit of a special video, a Q&A video replying to the most frequently asked questions I receive some every week and I thought it was time to do a Q&A, so to reply to all these questions I receive all the time. So you can grab a cup of tea of your favorite tea and we are going to do this video. It's going to be a more chatty video than usual but I just thought it would be nice for me to reply to all these questions. I try to keep as much as I can your questions for upcoming videos and try to find inspiration from your comments and your messages but sometimes I don't see how I could turn these questions into a video on, on its own so I'm going to reply to those in this video. So the first question I receive all the time is are you a full-time artist and how did you make that happen? How did it happen that you can make an entire living from your art? And sometimes people ask me suggestions and advices, things like that. I'm not really good for these things so I'm just going to uh, quickly tell you how it worked for me. The question people never ask, I never, never received these questions, is how long did it take? Nobody never wants to know that. Because the truth is, for all of us who really did an entire living from our art uh, without any help from outside or any, anything like that, it take and it took a long time. There is, there is no shortcuts, there is no magic recipe or that. It doesn't exist when you create your art, your thing from scratch, from nothing really, from only your imagination. It's going to take time. So I'm a full-time artist now. I make a living from my artwork that I sell on Etsy, from my online workshops that I have online on my own website, and from other projects which might come from time to time, like last year I took part to the exhibition Fantasy pour un Palais organized by Le, Mon Le, Le Centre des Monuments Nationaux, so I did a piece for that, so from time to time I also collaborate to other projects for public institutions, museums, things like that, and I've done also other things in the past, and I have other things coming also in this Field. So there are projects like that. So this, all these things didn't happen, of course, overnight. And I didn't even in a nice home also at the beginning. I started to sell my art in 2002. When I was still a student uh, studying art history in university in Grenoble, which is a city in the French Alps, a little in the south of Lyon. And it's surrounded by mountains. And there I was doing an art market in Lyon, so I was living there, I was taking the train twice a month, um, tw two Sundays a month, to sell my art, the things I was starting to create in paper, in this art market in Lyon, which takes place even today, every Sunday morning. And it is called Le Marché de la Création, and this is where I started, where I met tons of other artists who were making a living from their art, um, that's really where I saw it was possible to do it and I started to see an interest for my work. So that was in 2002. Then the year after I moved to Lyon because I wanted to do the art market every Sunday. It was just too exhausting to do it um, like I was doing from another town. I didn't have a car, I still don't have a car, so I was taking the train, two trains with my artwork, in bags, in things. It was a mess, it was a big big adventure, so it was more comfortable to do it living in Lyon. And when I was in, in Grenoble, I also had a part-time job in a fast food. Then when I was arriving in Lyon, doing the art market every Sunday, I was also working in a museum, the textile and art, um, decorative arts museum, a few hours a week, just to complement a bit what I was doing. I was not living in a big apartment, anything like that, not at all, it was just a small thing. And then in the art market, in Le Marché de la Création, I started to make galleries and places where I, I started also to sell and to show my work there. So in Lyon and in Switzerland and in all these places. So that's how it worked. And then in 2006, I started my blog online. So I started to do things online for the first time. I was not doing things online before. I was not in, an internet computer person. So uh, it took me a long time to get used to all the technological thing and um, then I started also to sell my work in Paris, in different places in Paris. 
and then I started to work with museum with castles all that little by little and opened my shop my Etsy shop in 2009 in 2009 and started my videos just a few videos a year before in 2009 also and I now I do more videos of course but it's just a long long process you see and I was then doing on an in-person workshop in my home in Lyon and then uh, my online workshop I started to do them in 2016. So you can see the progress, it took a long time. I'm a tortoise, there are things I would probably do a bit differently right now. I would start my online things earlier. I would have, do, I would have done things a bit differently if, with the knowledge I have right now. But still it, take a long, it takes a long time just to try to make people aware of what you do and all that and just to build your thing. Um, yes, that's, that's what it takes. And most of the artists I know who started at the same time as me or pretty much, they, it, it also took them several years really to make a full living from the art. So every artist has the journey, but usually it takes some time. And also uh, at this time, I didn't have crazy expenses or anything like that. So it's for sure easier when you start at the beginning. I was still a student. Um, I live in a tiny home. My home in Lyon, the first I had, I had my toilets outside my home. It was not inside. And I lived there for four years. It was a sort of 19th century <laughs> way of living. I don't think it's still possible to, to live in, I hope it's not possible to, to rent these sort of places right now, but I had to share my toilets with an old man, so it was not all uh, rainbow and, and unicorn and glitter, not at all, so it just, I was just happy to, because my rent was really low, so I was happy to, to have that so I could start to sell my art without too much pressure for my home. So. That's what I said. I, I just really do things as I could and afford things as I could. I never had a car. I, to this day, I don't have a car. Um, the ingredients are different from all of us. So, but when people ask me that with sometimes a bit of suspicion or that, I say, no, it just took time. It just took a decade, I would say, to really make a, a good living from your work or at least being able to cover all your expenses. Um, yes, to make a living as you would do if you had a normal job. So. That's the reply. Yes, I'm a full-time artist, but it took some time to make things work. Did you study in an art school? What sort of uh, studies have you done to create what you do now? So I'm a self-taught artist, so all the things I've learned, I've self-taught myself. I've just discovered them little by little, creating, drawing, doing all that. I will have really a video about my passion for paper coming, but this will be a totally separate video. So I will share in details more things about that. But no, I've studied art history, as I said earlier, in university in Grenoble. In, uh, um, so it was really the theoretical part of art. Uh, just the part you do when you want to work in museum castles, this sort of things. And I was, while I was doing that, I was playing a lot with uh, experiencing a lot of different things in theatre because I wanted to be a set and costume designer, so doing costumes and decor for mainly opera. My dream was to work in the opera world because that's what I love, but it didn't really work that way. I realized I didn't really like to work in team with other people. I just prefer being on my own. So I just changed completely my road and started to work uh, to do some other sort of projects and then started to sell my work in the art market, all that. But uh, yes, I study um, painting, sculpture, architecture, all that, but in a the theoretical point of view, uh, the, heart, the, the art history really, that's what I have done uh, in university. Question about language. So this is a question I have a lot. The two questions related to language I have is, uh, why are your videos, workshops, everything you do in English coming from French people? And the question whether English speakers would, would ask is, how did you learn your English? How did you improve it and how do you speak English like that? So for the French, the French uh, asked me that because in France there is a very specific relation to language, the French and the use of it. It's extremely difficult to explain that when you are from abroad because it's not something you have in other European countries where people are more comfortable with languages. Uh, they use them without any problem and here for me for example very simply i do now my blog pretty much in english my videos are in english my workshops are now only in english um, i will i will tell you why but this is uh, for a french person a bit irritating because i don't make an effort translating everything and i don't really really understand why i do that 
um, it's it's strange. Uh, what happened is mainly right now I don't have French person who buy my artwork. I don't have this person don't come to me, they don't buy them. Then people who come to my online workshops, there are a few French person who come and I, I thank them, I'm grateful for that they come, but they're just not a lot. So it's not enough for me to do things totally in French as I used to do in my first year where I did my online workshops. And it was just too much work for not a lot of person coming. To this day, I still have two workshops in French in my online website that are still available. I'm going to tell you, I sell two or three or four a year and that's all from these French workshops. So you see, it's just not enough to do a mountain of work, which is a lot of technical thing or that for just two or three persons. It doesn't make sense. And I prefer creating and doing things in my, in my studio than working in front of my computer. So this is simply the reason. I just put my time where it makes me really happy and fulfilled and satisfied. And translating everything, all that, there's work behind it. You don't understand, that's just work. Or you pay someone to do it. So you have two options. And the videos you see sometimes online where they have a lot of translation and all that, uh, it's mainly because they have a lot of millions of views and people are happy to, to translate them because they will promote them as a translator. They have things behind it. They just don't do it for kindness. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think they do it because it's going to promote them, their skills of translators. So when you are not, don't have millions of views, it's just more difficult. So I do them in English because I know it's the language most people understand who are watching my videos. So that's the reason. But I receive very aggressive messages from time to time from French people who just seem to be completely, <laughs> they seem not to understand and they don't want to and the thing is, is they see that a bit like a, if I was a traitor, I don't make the effort or, or some sort of arrogance for me. I don't do the effort to do everything in French and, and also the thing in France we learn between, between two and three foreign languages at school as other European countries. Most of European countries learn at least one, two, three usually two. So as a grown-up person, as an adult, you should be able to use these languages. They are tools that will be helpful during your adult life. I just struggle to understand how it is that in France the level of adults uh, is so low in languages. And it's really, it's really low compared to other Europeans. It's really everyone in North of Europe speak and understand and use their languages really well. Germany, Italy, East of Europe also. So I don't know, it's strange, but that's the reason. Another question I have a lot from English speakers is how did I learn English? So as I said, I studied English in high school, I studied also German, and then I improved it as an adult by my interest in British literature. I like British literature from the 18th and 19th century and I read a lot of books, watch a lot of films, use a lot of things online also. So listening to a lot of English radio, English programs, so that's really the way I improve. From home, my skills in English. I've never lived abroad, I've traveled a few times but not a lot, so this is really the way. And of course when I started to do my videos and speak and speak with people online or that, it helped me also a lot. So that's really the way, really with my interest, uh, with the with, with uh, British culture, um, English culture, all that. A uh, question I receive very often is, do you do commissions? Can you do a copy of some of your past work for me? Can you do some sort of other variations of something you already have sold in your shop or that? So this I receive every week. I receive, it's my most <laughs> uh, frequently asked question. I receive it all the time. So right now what happened is my year is pretty packed. Um, I have an Etsy shop, I try to update it as often uh, as I can. I missed the two past Christmas season because I was doing weather for my workshops or for the projects. I had the exhibition last year, which took a big time of the fall seasons. I was not able really to add new pieces during the Christmas season, but I really hope this year I will be able to add new things in fall and Christmas. So these take a long time. Then I have my workshops, my online workshops. I work on them pretty much three months before it was more the two past years, but now I try to make it three months a year, very intense, very dense because I film, I edit, I do everything and it's just a lot of, there's a lot of work in the workshop. So I do that. 
and I love doing them, but I, yes, I do that a few months a year. And then from time to time, I also have other projects coming and I have other things coming in that field. So uh, it doesn't leave a lot of time and space to work for people. What happened also in the past, I did many commissions in the past for people who asked me, messaged me, all that. And some went well, some went quite well, and some were absolutely, absolute nightmares. So I didn't always find that very comfortable. Some artists are super comfortable in doing that. I'm not, I'm just fine. At first, I find it not super exciting to redo something you have already done completely. And then sometimes it's hard to, to, to satisfy people. I find it very hard and sometimes a bit frustrating. So I just thought now, no, I'm going to update my shop. People like things, they buy it, they don't like it, they don't buy it. That's just so much easier. It's just difficult to, to, to content and satisfy people. So I just prefer working like that. So no, I don't do commissions. I try to update my shop. I will have a lot of things coming that I hope you will like, and if you like them, well, you will be able to, to have them. Uh, do you only use paper and do you plan to use other supplies, other medium in your life, in your art, in the upcoming years? So I have worked with other materials, of course, I've done tons of other things that I have never sold before when I was younger. Uh, so I've tried and played with a lot of uh, materials, a lot of things coming from nature, also blossoms, uh, sort of, all sorts of uh, branches, wood, things like that. And I incorporated those a bit in my first pieces I sold in, in Lyon in the art market. But I changed little by little because it's nice and interesting, but I think there is a very fragile part of it that I didn't like. Sometimes you could have had bugs and insects coming and mushrooms and all sorts of things. Though they are very beautiful, all that, now I don't use them anymore. Maybe I will one day, but for now I'm just happy and excited by paper. This is my medium, the, the one I really like, adore, so I'm, I'm not going to change because I still have tons of things to do with that. I'm just, I would say I'm just at the beginning, so no, I don't plan to change. Maybe play with other sort of paper, that's a possibility, but I'm not really interested in other materials. And a question related to videos and all that that people ask me sometimes is do you do everything? Do you film your video? Do you edit your video yourself? How do you do all that? So yes, of course, I do everything. I learn my skills little by little using the, the little uh, software you have on your computer first and then buying another one and then learning how to, to use microphones and then learning how to edit. Just at my own pace and it's not perfect by no means I just do what I can and yes and I had to do that for sure to to for my workshops because I really had to learn to edit and to put all that all that into into shape so that's yes I do everything myself absolutely everything from all the videos you see on YouTube or in my workshops I do them all <laughs> so there's no problem with that uh, that's uh, yes that's some skills I also had to learn on my way do you plan to do a book someday? That would be really a good idea. So books were at the beginning of my path, actually. That was my absolute purpose. I mentioned that in many uh, past videos. I did a lot of collage, I did a lot of illustrations, things which I submitted to publishers and all that for a few years. And it was not always working. It was just difficult. It seemed these doors didn't want to open. So. Uh, I changed my mind and I realized I would maybe do that later, do other things that would help me to live. Doing books these days, I don't really know. I think the world is changing so much so fast. The way people have access to things is changing also. The economical side of all the book industry is changing also. So I'm not sure right now it's the right thing to do for me. Um, I, I did that. I submitted projects to publishers three times in my life for three different projects and they were refused every time. Not the first time. The first time it could have worked but it didn't and um, the other times no. I thought that the, the doors were just more and more and more difficult to open. Some a handful of people make a living from their books. There are, it's true, but for most people it's not. It's just something they do on top of the other things. So maybe I will do something. I know there are a lot of ways to self-publish also. 
right now I'm not totally ready to do that. Uh, I, my life is quite packed with things right now and I know for people it's difficult sometimes to see that. I do my artwork, I do my online workshops, uh, I uh, take part to other projects, I do my videos which take time also on YouTube. All these things take time. I look at things from a little outside and when I will be ready maybe I will jump and I will say okay I will take few months or one year to work on a side project on when it will be ready I will do something with that we will see it might come it might never come we'll never know I still have this dream and I think it still will come when it will be ready well I hope I replied to all the questions you had if you have other questions for sure put them under the video I will keep them maybe whether for a separated video I have few few I didn't include in this series because I will have them in separated video or maybe for another Q&A someday uh, if um, if I do another one but I hope at least I replied to some of the questions you had. I'm going back in the studio right now working on my princess on the pea. I'm excited to work on this fairy tale. I have another one too. So I'm doing a princess on the pea and I'm jumping on in another fairy tale. I didn't explore for even longer so I'm super excited to go back in this one but I will let you know this one after I finish the princess on the pea. And I also, this weekend, I do all my home projects. So you will see that I have my paint, I grab my paints. I have all the things I need. Now zero excuses. I need to, I need to start and to do it. And I will show you that when it starts to be a little interesting. And I will show you some home updates. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your encouragement and for your kindness and for your support and for your questions because they allowed me to do this video. You can subscribe if you don't want to miss the next videos and I will see you very soon.